record on this Perfect. computer. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is great. The, uh, yeah. Thank you. So this is the IPFS all hands. Today is the 30th of April. It's six o'clock where I am at, at least. Um, so we have a note taker. We have started the recording. And if you have something that you want to bring up, do not forget it. Add it in the agenda. Otherwise, we are going to skip it. So the first thing we will do is that Matt is going to introduce us to someone new. Okay. I'm happy to introduce everyone to Mike. Mike, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, it's Gelser. Mike Gelser, who's, who's joined us as the product manager for LibP2P. And you'll see him doing lots and lots and lots. So Mike, maybe if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. Um, <clears throat> uh, so basically, um, I came to uh, PL from Docker. Uh, the container uh, company and um, basically what I did there was um, so I've been doing open source product management for a long time now um, I at docker I was uh, a product manager for what we called docker core uh, it means something a little bit different from the way PL uses that um, it just basically referred to our open source um, it just all sort of all of our open source um, and so uh, the main projects I worked on were um, the clustering for the Docker engine. So Docker, if you're not familiar, it's a, it's a container engine. It's like a lightweight virtual machine system. Um, and uh, it became very popular uh, around like 2014 um, because it makes it very easy to run, um, to, to run con uh, containerized applications. But then what we started to discover was that as people were using it, they really wanted to use it on multiple machines and not just uh, uh, in, in machines operating independently. They actually wanted to cluster these machines together and share data and have private network interfaces between them and, um, you know, really treat them as a single sort of like unit of compute. And so what, what we worked on um, were a couple of different solutions to how do you cluster a set of Docker nodes together. Um, one of them was a product that I built and launched uh, with um, a really great engineering team at Docker called uh, Docker Swarm. And this is uh, some functionality that we just built into the Docker engine so that you could just cluster Docker, uh, different Docker hosts, you know, so different Linux boxes running Docker. You could cluster them together uh, uh, very easily. And we did a lot around sort of make it secure out of the box, like really strong security. Uh, easy to use, um, good, good uh, overlay networking, which is kind of makes it look like all, all of the machines are on the same uh, sort of v VPN. Um, so, so we built that. And then um, we also did, um, I also worked a lot on our Kubernetes strategy because a lot of our users wanted to use Kubernetes to cluster their, their Docker engines together. So um, those are sort of the two main things I, I worked on at Docker. And it was a great experience. You know, I started there in 2018. It was a really small company. It was like, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I don't want to say chaotic because that has a negative connotation. But, uh, you know, it was like typical kind of startup, like a million things going on. And um, I tried to help sort of bring some order to, to that and, and help us execute on the things that like really mattered. And um, that's actually kind of what I'm hoping to do on libp2p. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's basically uh, my recent background. I mean, b big picture, I've, I've been writing software and managing software teams uh, since I was in my early 20s. Um, actually, since I was uh, 19, actually. Um, I've started companies. Uh, I've um, done, I've started a couple companies. Uh, one was a uh, um, way, way, way back in the early 2000s. And then um, another one was a, a, a contract software development shop that I ran uh, for a while. And so I have, uh, you know, a lot of experience in engineering management, product management. Obviously, I've written a huge amount of code. I love low level stuff. I, I love getting into the Linux kernel. Um, I actually really love the, the Windows kernel too, which is weird, but um, I'm being honest here. 
I think it's very well designed. Uh, it's a, it's kind of, they took a lot of the best ideas from VMS, which is a really ancient operating system. And you can, even today, you can still see those reflected in the design of the Windows kernel. But um, yeah, so, so that's me. I, I'm a product manager, but I'm really technically, you know, engineering focused kind of guy. Um, I, I love to get, actually get into the code. And um, so that's, you know, that's sort of what I'm, that's kind of what I'm about. Is that a helpful introduction? Yeah, that's great. How about you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing with libpdp? Okay, yeah. So um, let me see if I can share my screen. So, so just uh, I'll preface it like this. Um, right now, libpdp is basically an upstream for um, for IPFS. Like it's primarily that that's how we, we we. It's not really its own project. It's sort of like when we need to do something in IPFS, we and and it touches libp2p, then people open PRs against uh, one of the libp2p repos. What what I want to do is turn libp2p into a real first class project. Um, and <clears throat> I, to me, that means a couple of things. Um, it, it it would probably have its own uh, team. Uh, you know, both people who are working on it. Um, part-time and probably also some some full-time engineers who would only work on libp 2 p um, It should also have its own goals uh, and it should have some kind of organizational structure, um, you know, just in terms of like, do you know, should we do a weekly IRC sync or a weekly meeting? Um, you know, should we, you know, have a, a set of shared goals that, that are kind of developed with PL and the community um, about, you know, what, what is the roadmap for the project look like? So basically just turn it into a, is really its own independent open source project. And with that said, I would like to share with you, uh, hold on a second, I gotta find the right window to share. Uh, okay, I would like to, to share. Okay, hopefully right now uh, you can see a uh, Google uh, spreadsheet. Just give me a thumbs up if you're seeing yep. this. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so um, what I try to do as a starting point is come up with some OKRs uh, that I want to propose to this group and then I'm going to ask for your feedback. Um, but basically, I, I think there's four main goals on uh, libp2p. The first one is turning it into a dedicated, uh, creating a dedicated working group. And this is what I'm saying about turning it into a first class project. Like, um, you know, we, we, we set up like a real working group with an, a known group of people who want to be members of that working group. Uh, and then um, I have some other ideas about, and this, I'm going to ask for feedback on this in, in a moment, but you know, I have some other ideas about how we should, Kind of structure things uh, in terms of should we do like some kind of weekly call? Um, should we have some kind of what I'm thinking is some kind of meta repo that would track issues across all of the uh, different implement language implementations of libp2p? So some sort of master place where we can go and see everything that's that's a GitHub issue in in any of the repos um, and uh, you know, have a roadmap document. Uh, so it's just stuff like that. So the first, that's the first goal, setting up the working group. Uh, so the second goal is about gathering uh, more information about user needs. So we have a variety of people other than IPFS who are using libp 2 p now. Um, there are folks like LivePeer, um, Ethereum, uh, Parity, uh, and then I suspect there are others I haven't discovered yet. So this number two is kind of this, uh, what I would call the product management goal, like um, basically just go out and talk to people who want to use libp 2 p get, get some information from them and uh, like about what their needs are or if they're, if they're trying and failing to use it in their project, figure out why they're failing and what do we need to do to, to fix it. Um, the third main goal, uh, the one that's labeled three, uh, basically that's about promoting libp 2 p so I have this theory, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I have a theory that there are a lot of people who want to build decentralized applications and 
they're gonna in the absence of of knowledge about of lib p2p's existence and knowledge of its quality and so on they're just going to reinvent the wheel um they're just going to completely build rebuild their own um peer-to-peer -peer primitives so what i want to do is kind of uh promote lib p2p in the sense of like put out more information about it you know every every talk that anyone does about lib p2p that's publicly posted i think we should aggregate those into some like you know like a like the lib p2p website um have some good tutorials for developers who just just want to un understand how to use lib p2p um <clears throat> and then the fourth <clears throat> excuse me the fourth goal uh is a set of um, this is like the features goal. So these are kind of high priority features for lib P2P. Uh, right now, some of these are being tracked in, um, so like the, the JS uh, IPFS team has a, has a set of goals specifically at the lib P2P layer. Um, from working with uh, Jeremy <clears throat> on uh, the, uh, talking to him about what are the needs for the Go lib P2P implementation, I put a few in here, you know, he has some ideas about um, needing to improve memory usage, uh, improve connectivity. So various places we want to improve, um, but but generally those are kind of um, you know sort of the bigger picture feature goals. Um, things that, that are not some things are more more appropriate as a GitHub issue, like if it's very specific and very uh, clear, and it, it, even if it needs discussion, well, especially if it needs discussion. Um, but some things are kind of bigger picture ideas, you know, like improved memory usage. That's kind of broad. It could, it could encompass multiple GitHub issues. <clears throat> so that's what I'm trying to do in the, in the number four goal. Um, and yeah, so, so this is kind of the idea I have about what, oops, what the goals of lib P2P should be. Maybe I can make this larger and it all fits. Um, yeah. So, okay, so that, so that's, those are basically my ideas. Um, l let me pause and, and ask if there, there's a couple of things I want to ask specifically for feedback on, but let me pause for a second because I've, I've said a lot here and I'm curious if anyone has any reactions. It helps if you stop sharing your screen that you can see if people raise their hands. Oh, oh, good point. Hold on, sorry, let me get to the participants view. Okay. If anyone has any questions or comments right now, raise your hand. You had a thumbs okay. up from Jeremy. Oh, okay. All right, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so there's a couple of things I wanted to ask, like specific uh, feedback from this group on. Um, uh, the first one is, give me a, a thumbs up if if you would you want to be part of a lib p2p working group like if one existed tomorrow would you join that okay yeah all right so we've got okay so Lars Jeremy Brennan okay Viso I, I thought I saw something for, yeah okay okay all right I did yeah David okay cool okay so so that's kind of what I expected um that's good uh, uh the second thing I want to ask is what how do people feel about doing a like a some kind of a weekly um, I don't want to call it a meeting because everybody hates meetings, but what I'm thinking is either a weekly sync on IRC or we could do a weekly call like this if people prefer uh, this kind of format. Um, I don't know, would folks participate in that or what, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, so I, I got a couple thumbs up there. Just uh Quick question. Yes. Is it possible to start with bi weekly? <laughs> yeah. Or is that this? <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. I, I hate I hate recurring meetings, but um, uh, yeah. I, I, I'd like to do that. I'd like to start with bi weekly. And the other thing I'd like to do is um, kind of solicit topics in advance. And if we have a week where there's there are just no topics, then just cancel it. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think that's that's a good suggestion. I, I I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, I would yeah. like to second Brendan in bi-weekly because you know, like uh, the way things are moving in Lib2P, where 
I mean, there are big tanks of work that need to happen. And, you know, like, I don't know how, you know, like, tightly managing it with a weekly meeting is going to help. It's probably better to start with my weekly. And would you, I'm just curious, would you prefer it to be uh, 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 something that we do on IRC or something that we do on Zoom? Uh, personally, I would prefer Zoom because, you know, like, it's, it's nice to get, you know, like, face-to-face -face interaction. You know, we can, can make it a half hour. You know, like, it's not a meeting per se. It's like more of a sync call. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Any other perspectives on? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to have everyone just, like, say what they're working on and what's happening. Uh, that's something that's hard to get or see from the outside. Mm. Okay. So kind of, a, kind of like a stand-up, like everybody said, yeah. And maybe you can break off if necessary. Okay. I'm pausing because I'm taking notes, so one second. <clears throat> um, is there anyone who, who would really uh, prefer to see this as, a, as an IRC chat? I'm just curious if there's, a, if there's any preference there. Okay, so you, you, you all right, Steven, so you'd rather be, do it IRC? Yeah. Okay, so we kind of have some votes each way. We'll we'll think about that. Um, definitely bi-weekly, definitely 30 minutes. Um, have everybody say what they're working on. I'll reach out to the specific to the specific people who raised their hands when I asked if you'd like to participate uh, after this call so we can coordinate uh, and not waste everybody else's time. Um, uh, <clears throat> there's also um, this, well, Maybe this is something we'll talk about in the first meeting. Um, I want to set up some kind of meta repo that, or, or yet yeah, it doesn't even have, maybe a repo is not the right word. I want to set up some kind of location that tracks across all of the different lib P2P um, implement, because there's multiple implementations and then uh, many of them like the Go and JS have multiple repos and there's like issues in those repos. so. We have a lot of information, and there's issues in the main IPFS repo. So we have a lot of uh, libp2p related issues spread across a large number of places, and I want to try to aggregate those somewhere. Um, I've heard some uh, votes for Waffle. I've heard some votes for ZenHub. Uh, I'm personally kind of tool agnostic, but I'd like to get something like that uh, set up. I think it would just be helpful to have a global view of the project. Yeah, OK. Um, but I think that the specific details of how we do that is something I think we could discuss in the first uh, the first sync chat. So I don't know that we need to figure it out right now. Um, the the last thing is, and and again, I might I'm thinking it might be better to push this to the sync chat with just the people who are interested. But I'd like some feedback on. Um, what I put there in number four as some of those feature goals, um, like, is that really capturing the most important things? Uh, is it, like, is it missing things? Is it including things that aren't that important? Like, I think we should try to have some um, priorities uh, debates and, um, you know, you, you know, use that to, to reach a agreement about what, um, what are the best priority, what, you know, what, what needs to be prioritized ahead of what, so. Um, but yeah, but I think I, I'm feeling like this maybe isn't the right call to do that. Um, so just a quick question. Um, could you paste the link to that spreadsheet into the notes? Oh yes. I, I'm planning to put this in the public, uh, OKRs document, uh, of PL. Um, but yeah, right now it's just a private spreadsheet, but let me, uh, I will, I will share, um, yeah, let me let me make it on private and, and I'll share it uh, with the Great, people. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Does anyone else have questions to Mike before we move on? A ton, but for later. <laughs> okay. I think Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, in regards to the fragmentation of all the issues spread across multiple repos and stuff like that, I think. Um, you know, getting an aggregate like that is important and displaying that to people so they can they can see basically the issues broadly 
but also in the meantime, while you guys are setting that up and things like that, I think it would be important to try to uh, focus that and direct people towards a, reposit a single repository where you'd rather see issues come up, um, just to try to mitigate that a little bit so that people don't keep posting on the wrong repositories. That's all I got. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I, I see what you mean, yeah. Um, it's tough because there's different types of issues, like some issues are kind of big picture, like de you know, a design proposal, but some issues are like very specific to, to, to a particular repo. So there is a case for putting issues in, in, in a repo and um, yeah, yeah, but, but I, I hear you, I, I think it's a good point. Um, I'm gonna try to set up some kind of master repo where we can have cross-cutting lib P2P discussions and like discuss like interop and you know stuff like that. So thank you. Very cool. Any other questions? All right. Then we're gonna move on. Uh, and it's back to Matt again about IPFS Summit, IPFS Con. Um, more, yeah, more excitement. So some of you already know about this. We are now ready to announce that in early July, we will be hosting a lib P2P, or sorry, an IPFS summit, which will be three days, followed by a lib P2P summit, which will be one day. Uh, and these will be in Berlin, probably in the second week of July. The goal of these so summits, perhaps, oh yeah. You, you are sounding a bit like a robot. Is that just for me or for oh. everyone? Could, could you please repeat from oh, the beginning? No. You I, I, disappeared I, I don't know what's wrong with my connection. I have, yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe try here and it will maybe work a bit better. Try what? You cut out. <laughs> it seems like Matt disappeared completely now. Uh, man. And I'm the one recording. Maybe we're reconnected and reconnected. Yeah. yeah. Or, or try turning off the video and the audio might be better. That works. Okay, let's see if that helps. So can you guys hear me clearly now? Okay, so we're happy to announce that, that in early July, in the sec Amy, for the second week of July, we'll be hosting an IPFS summit, which will be three days, followed by a Lib P2P summit, which will be one day. Uh, we're aiming for these, as I said, the second week of July in Berlin. And these are meant to be focused working meetings where all of the attendees are active contributors to IPF, IPFS or people who are very actively building stuff on IPFS. So it's, it's a working meeting with a high amount of context required for the participants. Um, and that will be a precursor to IPFS Conf, which we're aiming to do in November in Lisbon. That will be a larger open enrollment event where anyone can participate and it will be exciting and big and uh, uh, yeah M more to come on IPFS conf in the future but I, for this announcement right now I'm really focused on IPFS summit and the lib p2p summit uh, the main thing to know about the summits is that it's invitation only so you have to ask to be invited um, because we are requiring only you have to you have to be actively involved in order to attend. You have to be actively contributing or, or either, either contributing code directly to the code bases or contributing in the form of using this, this, using this software really proactively and contributing to the conversations that are steering our, our uh, strategy and our decisions about how to, how to navigate the future for these, these projects. So uh, what we will be doing, uh, well like one rule of thumb for right now, if you are on, if you're reflected on any of the OKR spreadsheets, you're going to be welcome at this summit. Um, so for, that's the majority of the people who are on these calls have have at least one KR somewhere on those sheets. Um, but for everyone else, we're going to be creating. Um, we'll have a rubric for like the people who are automatically included. So for example, if you're contributing code to the code base, you're automatically welcome. Um, but we're also going to create a public IPFS users registry. 
that will let people register their, themselves and their projects as users of IPFS and tell the world about your project. But we will also use that as part of the rubric for deciding who's, who's able to attend the summit. So I'll be shipping a first version of that uh, over the next week of the, the sign-up form for the IPFS summit, plus a sign-up form for the IPF. So sign-up form for the user registry and a sign-up form for the IPFS summit. Um, and yeah, are there any questions? I don't see any hands up. I see some thumbs up. And this will be our first time having a, a, a critical, uh, having a majority. Oh, Vizo, did you have a question? Do we actually get to do anything uh, for this? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Right, I mean, what's the action items for participants on this? So, so it's going to be like a working meeting. So in the lead up, the main thing that you'll be doing is proposing sessions. Um, which will will solicit proposals over the coming weeks for people proposing sessions that they want to have it have or presentations that they want to have in the first day people are going to give lightning talks about the projects that they've been about the various projects that they've been working on so those would be like rapid fire updates on all the different projects so if you've been working on uh, specific projects uh, you'll be giving a lightning talk um, but then it's also the, all these working groups will be meeting and they will be having face-to-face -face meetings where they're planning the next uh, three to six to 12 months of their work. And so the main preparation that you can do there is getting involved in the working groups and getting involved in the planning so that you, you have as much planning done in advance asynchronously before you arrive so you can make the most of the time when you're face-to-face. -face. Um, so that's, yeah, so to answer your question, it's if you've been doing work that should be giving an update, be like prepare to give a lightning talk. If there are sessions you want us to have at the meeting, be what uh, you should propose those sessions when we float uh, requests for proposals for sessions, uh, which you might end up running if you proposed it. And then also be prepared to be doing working meetings with the working groups. So get involved with the working groups. Uh, the other thing to flag is that the lib P2P summit's going to be a lot smaller than the IPFS one. So we're, the, there are a lot of people who totally belong at an IPFS working summit who just aren't actively involved in lib P2P. And so we will narrow down uh, the, the group so the, for the, for the lib P2P meeting so that that meeting can stay focused and not, not have a lot of people who are kind of interested and they care, but aren't actively involved in the implementation decisions. And if that's all, then that was the announcement. People were really excited to be doing this. This will be the first time of having a majority of IPFS contributors and users or a majority of contributors and a critical mass of contributors all physically in the same place together. Uh, the closest we've gotten to that so far was 2016. We had a workshop in Lisbon, um, but that was actually sort of, uh, it was actually a pretty small subset of the IPFS users out there even then. So this is really exciting to, to get everyone together. And that's my announcement. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, then the next point on our agenda is Rob. Last call for comments. Oh, uh, I'll just make this hopefully quick. Um, so there are two issues in the docs repo that have been sort of stewing for a little while. Um, and I just want to make sure people here were aware of them as sort of a last call. So one of the things from the earlier research I did for documentation that came out of it was this big spreadsheet of all the repos and how there's a lot of confusion both around uh, how a given repo is meant to be used, um, but also whether it's actually active or deprecated or what. Um, and so those two issues are around uh, finding a, a standardized way to make it really clearly communicated, both of those things, to make it really clear that a repo is, is dead um, and you should go find information about that stuff somewhere else or understand that that tool or library is no longer supported and no longer actively used. Um, so it's mostly uh, right now focused on uh, things like 
naming and what we need to make sure are labels on and that kind of stuff. Um, if you have comments, please make them. Um, I'm hoping to sort of make this a, a last call for comments and we'll make a decision on Wednesday so that we can actually start to enact that across all the repos, which is a big job because there are a lot of repos. Um, and uh, then the other one I mentioned in there is that there's a PR for kind of a, a standardized licensing policy because in a similar sense, uh, there's a lot of different ways that all the various repos are licensed. Um, and A, for sanity's sake, it should be a little bit more standardized, but especially for people who are making use of them, um, it should be standardized and clear things that are IPFS are licensed a certain way. Um, so there's a PR. Uh, please check that out if you have strong thoughts or want to give input on licensing, because um, we'd like to get that you know squared away as soon as possible too. And that's it. Ooh, do we have any questions regarding this? All right, no questions. Let's move on. Uh, then we have Jeremy talking about Go IPFS. Wait, I am. Oh yeah, we have a release candidate out um, for 0.4.15, the RC1, go try it. Um, probably it's looking pretty clean so far. There's not too much to do here. Uh, probably just going to ship that in a couple of days officially and then move on to 06, 0416, which is going to be a pretty big release uh, because we're going to be trying to get some pretty significant lib-p2p refactors in. Um, or rather, I should say, Stephen is going to be trying to get some really important lib-p2p refactors in. It's going to be great. Um, beyond that, uh, we have a bunch of other updates that have been waiting to go through for a while. Some stuff in uh, the Go data store package that's going to make cluster more performant and some other fun stuff that just generally makes things nicer. Anything specific, uh, Stephen, you wanted to bring up? Cool. All right. Do we have any questions? Oh, yeah. As uh, Dominic says, better Windows support. 0415 is going to have slightly better Windows support, actually pretty decently better Windows support. And then 0416 is going to have a few other pretty good things fixed. Good work. By, by better Windows support, we mean it won't shit all over your file. Yes, we won't. The IPFS won't puke and create all sorts of random files filled with Chinese letters in your root directory. It'll be great. Finally, finally. OK, moving on. We have Viso talking about the DHT. Guys, so basically, over the last few months, we have been noticing deteriorating performance on the DHT. And you know, like recently, things have started reaching some critical mass, getting issues about you know, like abysmal performance you know, like on IPNS and DHT queries. And we've been investigating uh, the problem, and it has finally crystallized that it seems to be that the root cause of the problem is that we can't uh, really, we don't put enough values on the DHT so that all the resolutions for IPNS, which are trying to resolve, to collect at least 16 nodes, uh, 16 values before making a determination for the best record, were timing out. So that was the tipping point that led down a rabbit hole. And after some, you know, like work with uh, Jeremy over the weekend, so we finally found the smoking gun. So we're at a crawler. And it seems that 61% of our DHT is unreachable. And during, we have lots of uh, dial data, and we're still working on the crawler to collect more data. But uh, the, the thing is that this is a major issue, and we should be pushing forward for integrated relays into our network infrastructure. So that's the heads up that I want to bring up so that people are aware that we have this uh, really, really big issue. And if you have ideas on how to approach it and want to contribute, just uh, Speak on. I have a okay. question in the notes. It says sixty percent darknet. When you say darknet, you you actually just mean stuff that we can't read, just so encrypted or probably encrypted. No, no. It means these are uh, nodes we cannot dial. So these are regular DHT nodes which are reported by other DHT nodes connected to them, and we cannot dial them. 
So they're unreachable. So they're active in the DHT and you know, like uh, nodes that are connected to them or posting values to them, but anybody else who is doing a resolution cannot actually reach them. Oh, is this a sign of, of possibly private networks leaking? Not at all, it's, uh, it's just not. Okay. So we're, we're suffering from severe NAT problems. Uh, I think uh, Johnny had a question as well, and then Dominic. Yeah, just walk me through that. It's waiting for 16 nodes to reply, and it basically it times out. Um, it, it, shouldn't you be able to like, um, just validate the signature of the record as being valid? Uh, it's so a little why, more why complicated. Wait for 16? Right, so it's a little more complicated by that. Uh, so first of all, there can be multiple records on the DST in different places. And there could be records published by multiple entities that possess the, the same key. So what we want to do is that uh, we want to be able to retrieve the best record, which is the latest record that has been published. And on the same time, we want to defend against the Eclipse attack. So basically, you could have a DAO just republishing the old uh, records all over the place and censoring a node, trying to publish new information. So that's an actual security issue as well. So the 16 is a security parameter that, well, it seemed like a, a good value, right? And you know, we're publishing, we're pushing to 20 nodes, let's read from 16, that's 80% quorum. That's pretty, pretty hard to fake. But <laughs> it turns out that if you cannot connect to 60% of those, you're not going to get uh, this quorum and we're simply going to time out everywhere and have abysmally slow uh, IPNS as a result. Dominic? Uh, so we had talked a little bit on, actually, sorry, my mic was being weird. Uh, we talked on IRC about um, possibly where this is coming from, where all these, these addresses are actually located. Um, it was speculated that maybe with the support of TAR, uh, the TAR releases that we have, users in China were, were getting uh, into the network. So I was wondering if you did any investigation as to the region where these bad addresses are coming from. Yeah, this, uh, this was a fair hypothesis I was formulating because we, we had seen some increase in issues from Chinese users. So there, there are signs, early signs of more adoption there. But I haven't confirmed this hypothesis. I, I haven't done a full analysis, but I mean, all the notes that I'm seeing are either ripe or are in. So they're, they're not you know, like a big nodes. Okay, do we have any more questions? All right, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, let's hope we get it fixed. Um, next point is Matt talking about RFC. Hey, this is just an announcement. These two RFCs have been hanging out there for a long time. I, I'm taking a new approach to getting them merged because the, the core working group is really busy. Um, Let's get sign off from at least three of the working group captains as a, as a signal that it's ready for like a final review and a merge. So if you are a working group captain, please read both of those RFCs and comment. The first one seems pretty much ready to merge. The second one, definitely read it and give comments. We, we can, it's passable, but we can probably make it better. The one key thing to pay attention to is that it's making this distinction between teams and working groups. And so pay attention to that teams being a focused team of three to 10 people that's trying to be a small focused team that has people focusing full time on building a product or a service versus working groups who exist as a, like they provide support to multiple teams or provide a way for multiple teams to coordinate with each other. And so this is different from the way we've used the word, the term working group up until now. Um, it allows us to create some healthy nudges towards uh, don't be a team of one person, try to be a team of three or more so you're not alone. Uh, and then also making a distinction between those teams who are building things versus working groups, which are a forum for conversation and a way for new community members to onboard onto the community and participate in conversations without necessarily having the opportunity to jump in on a specific team right away. So, uh, so yeah, please read those, please comment, and I'm gonna try to get them merged because for the IPFS Summit, 
we want to be able to have those working groups meet. So we need to have the protocol hammered out of how those working groups officially form and manage themselves. So please chime in and, and look at that one and we'll try to get emerged. And if you're a working group captain, please give it a plus one um, if you think it's fine and okay to merge. Cool. That's, that's the announcement, announcement if there's no question. Any questions before we move on? Nope, cool, all right. And then we have our last agenda points, which is from David, contributing guideline. Hello, hello, can everyone hear me well? Sweet, I'll go try because I'm on Heather. Cool, so one of the things that we did this last week was actually creating a protocol to have lead maintainers for the GSIPFS module ecosystem. Like people have been reporting, like or having trouble just like getting things merged, getting things reviewed, because after all, there was a huge bottleneck, me, to review everything and to release all the dependencies. And although, um, well, I do try to answer everyone's on time, like the reality is I just cannot. And there's a lot of people excited to contribute with their time and attention and, and rigor to make sure that the, the packages are always up to date and released and merged and have all of the, always the latest features. And so with that, we, we first like created an issue, like I posted both links there, first created an issue, just like raising the problem, just like saying that we are going to move forward with this. And then um, we updated the JS code contributing guidelines. Um, it has some other changes, basically a cleanup of the previous guidelines, and it includes this new protocol, which essentially we encourage and like we enable people to become a lead maintainer of a module. And a lead maintainer has a set of responsibilities, like you can check them on the, the document, and, and typically there's like kind of like a handoff ritual where like there's just like a conversation from the previous lead maintainer or the tech lead of the project to the new lead maintainer. But again, the goal continues to be um, empowering and encouraging more people to like take ownership over certain parts of the project. And just also recognize because a lot of people were already doing it at work, so it's better just like to have a way to give the permissions uh, to give the publish access to 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 give that authority. Um, GitHub fortunately helps us a lot because there's a lot of new tools on GitHub branch protection. There is a screenshot on that issue as well that shows which settings we are using. One that's pretty cool is like you can actually ask for people to sign commits um, on on GitHub itself. Like you don't have to like bring extra tooling to ask for that feature. And so as we go through all these packages, which are lots, and like as we add the lead maintainer to Remy, um, we are also setting like the right permissions, giving the right publish access, like um, and, and, and yeah, like distributing the the ownership. So people like seem to be be very excited. Like there was a lot of positive feedback on the PR itself. If people have comments now, questions, uh, thumbs up. It's also welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Any any hands? Cool, cool, cool. I see some more turns up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's what I wanted. Thank cool. you. Indeed. No problem. Any any questions? All right. So this was our last agenda point. There is one de demo that has been pre-recorded from Alan about uh, IPLD Explorer CLI tool. So there is, a, there is a YouTube video you can check out for how the tool is working. There is a link to the GitHub repo. And probably if you try out the tool, you will have lots of ideas what it should do or what it shouldn't do. And then you can go to the GitHub issues and write your thoughts there. Otherwise, do we have any other questions? that people have been sitting on last week or so. We have about 10 minutes left of the, of the meeting in general. So if you come up with something, speak up now or hold your tongue forever. For one week. Yeah, for one week. <laughs> forever <laughs> being one week. Um, on that uh, note, um, 
we actually don't have 10 more minutes like on the issue to reduce the meeting time from 60 to 30. Uh, since we were kind of like still on that one, I just went ahead and reduced it to 45. So we are right now two minutes uh, uh, um, above the meeting. Like if you check the calendar, it was updated. The template was updated as well. I think cool. at least the ring was updated. Uh, all right. Yeah. So the last agenda point in our meeting would be that now the all hands is just 45 minutes and not one hour. <laughs> An hour's time. Okay. Cool. All okay. right. Then I think we're done. So thank you everyone for your time and take care and see you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.